I recently read the book, The Charisma Myth, by author Olivia Fox Cabain. If you lack charisma, life can be frustrating. You can be a great employee and produce great work, but if you lack charisma, your more charismatic colleague with the same amount of experience will probably get promoted before you do. If you have a fantastic business idea, but lack charisma, you might find it nearly impossible to get funding for your business. While a more charismatic entrepreneur with a worse idea will have investors knocking on her door. If you lack charisma, you simply need to settle for a life of fewer opportunities. Or do you? If you look at the early presentations by Steve Jobs, you'll notice that he wasn't nearly as charismatic as he was later in life. In his initial presentations, he was bashful, awkward, and a bit too nerdy. In the years following those initial presentations, Steve Jobs learned how to be more charismatic. Author Olivia Fox Cabane has spent her life studying and teaching charisma. She's proven that, like Steve Jobs, you can develop your charisma with practice. The assumption that charisma is something you naturally have is a myth. Charisma isn't a gift. Charisma is a skill you can develop. However, before acquiring the skill of charisma, you need to identify what exactly charisma is. You know a charismatic person when you meet them. They seem to have a magnetic quality about them that draws you to them. When they walk into a room, you notice them. When they talk, you listen. And when they ask for a favor, you're eager to help. We naturally do these things because charismatic people have found a way to convey three positive qualities simultaneously. These qualities are power, warmth, and presence. You see power, warmth, and presence in the late Steve Jobs, in the late Martin Luther King, and in Oprah Winfrey. It's the rare combination of power, warmth, and presence that makes these people's personalities so magnetic. But not only do these people convey power, warmth, and presence, they do so in a way that appears effortless and natural. So how can you and I learn to convey these three qualities and authentically increase our charisma? Author Olivia Fox Cabane has found that the best way to convey power, warmth, and presence naturally is to put yourself in the right mental states prior to your social interactions. Olympic athletes have shown that one of the most effective ways to put yourself in the right mental state is to conduct visualizations. If we can play the right visualization in our minds before each social interaction, our body language will naturally adapt to those visualizations because our body thinks what the mind sees is real. The right visualizations prior to a social interaction can induce feelings of power, warmth, and presence in our bodies, which will then be conveyed to the people we talk to. Here are three effective visualizations to convey more power, warmth, and presence. First, the power visualization. Have you ever heard of power posing? Power posing is the act of adopting a pose like Usain Bolt would at the finish line of a 100-meter dash with his hands raised above his head. Or power posing is putting your hands on your hips and posing like Superman. The goal of a power pose is to widen your body and take up more space. When you adopt a power pose, you create a noticeable hormonal effect in your body. A recent Stanford University study found that adopting a power pose and taking up more space reduces anxiety-related hormones by 25% and gives the outward appearance of poise and confidence. But holding a power pose before a social interaction or forcing yourself to widen your body during a social interaction can be rather awkward. It's usually better to conduct a visualization that will naturally cause your body to relax and expand and convey a sense of power authentically. One great visualization to do this is to see yourself walking into a room or on a stage as a big gorilla. If you're a big gorilla, you take up a lot of space. When you walk into a room, people need to get out of your way to make space for you. If you're a big gorilla, you're a territorial animal and you like to stand up, inflate your chest, and pound it with your fists. I found that visualizing myself walking into the room as a big gorilla is just what I need to loosen up the tension in my shoulders, open up my posture, and stand tall, all of which convey a sense of power to other people. Next, the warmth visualization. When you think of warmth, think of the goodwill a mother has towards her children. A mother always sees the best in her children and assumes they're going to be really good people. To create this mother-like energy, 
you just need to imagine that everyone you meet has angel wings. Why angel wings? Well, every angel has to perform a series of good deeds in their life to become an angel. This means that everyone you meet will have performed a good deed worthy of making them an angel. Maybe their good deed was rescuing a child from a fire or taking care of a dying parent. When you meet someone with angel wings, you're fascinated by their backstory. You're curious about what good deeds they've done in life and you assume they're a good person, all of which naturally conveys a sense of warmth. And finally, a visualization to convey presence. When you convey a sense of presence, you make people feel like that they have your full attention. Having this effect is incredibly hard because our minds love to wander. Harvard psychologist Daniel Gilbert estimates that nearly half of the average person's time is spent mind wandering. During a social interaction, we'll spend at least half of our time thinking about what we're gonna say next or a problem outside of the conversation we're having. A great way to stop your mind from wandering and bring your attention back to the present moment is to focus on a sensation in your body. Think back to a time that you stubbed your toe. Was it hard to think about anything else other than the pain in your toe you're experiencing at that moment? Any sensation that's happening in our body is happening in the present moment. If we simply focus on that sensation, our attention is brought back to the present moment. However, you don't need to stub your toe to redirect your attention back to the present moment. You simply need to take a second to notice any feeling in your toes. This could be the feeling of your toes touching the floor or the fabric of your sock or the sole of your shoe. For an easy to remember visual, I like to imagine my brain being transported down into my big toe. That brain in my toe can detect the slightest sensations in my toes. By conducting this visualization and concentrating on my toes, I notice that my awareness shifts from the thoughts in my head down through my body and into my toes. Once my attention is in my toes, I am present and I can redirect my full attention to the person I'll be talking to next. This will naturally convey a sense of presence. So if you want to take the first steps to developing more charisma, start putting yourself in the right mental state before a social interaction. Imagine you're the big gorilla walking into the room. Imagine that everyone you meet has angel wings and imagine your mind dropping down into your toes. By engaging in these visualizations before a social interaction, your body language and your voice will come across as more powerful, warm, and present, all of which will make you more charismatic. That was the core message that I gathered from the Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabain. This is a well-researched book on charisma. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribe to the free Productivity Gain email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.